2022 was quite a year. Russia aside, that's hard because I think Russia made up for maybe two thirds of all the attacks on Sweden. The ransomware industry have enterprises with up to a hundred hackers working almost like an assembly line. Big money business. They cybercrime gangs. They use ransomware to destroy. They don't care about money. So even if the company wants to pay, highly destructive attacks, they just destroyed it. And that is interesting from a legal point of view. The consequences, they are much, much worse. There's no black and white division between nation state and cyber criminal threat actors anymore. No one knows what's going to happen following this crisis. But what we do know is that war is an incubator. We have no idea what's going to happen when these cyber weapons get into the hands of the cyber criminals. We've done roughly three times as many big incidents this year compared to last year. It's malware, it's phishing, it's potentially unwanted application. I mean, it's it's all over. The threat actors are evolving. Uh, we can see how they have changed a couple of things on how they work. Everything has gotten bigger. We've seen organizations not surviving 2022. There is no, we didn't know about this or this wasn't supposed to be there. In the regular ransomware case, you want to be stealthy for a couple of days. I think we have seen them all. Brutal, not caring about anything, highly destructive attacks. But in, in the industrial espionage case, you want to get inside and you will want to stay forever. The silent threat or the, the threat from state actors is is there always. You need to understand the consequences. Most companies or most businesses, they don't think that they are interesting enough. If you want to know more about the current threat landscape, go to truesec.com slash threats.